Good evening, uh, future masters. In today's lesson, uh, uh, we'll study the game uh, Van Vliet versus Nosko Borowski in 1907. Again, a uh, very interesting opening. And I noticed uh, a lot of kids are playing this opening with a white side. So let's see one game. D4. And we have this move E3. Now it looks very strange, right? because it's blocking the bishop. But um, what uh, white wants to do is, white wants to build up those pawns. Look at the, look at the structure of the pawns. And then play the move f4. And this is called in chess a stone wall, right? So you have uh, those pawns here. And that's called a stone wall. Now, Let's see what are the advantages of those pawns in the center. Of course, they are very strong, right? Powerful, right? And, um, and those two pawns are supporting the knight, like later on, the knight who jumped to e5, right? So that's that's the strength of this position. But then uh, there are some disadvantages. Um, the biggest one is this bishop here that hardly can get into the game. And uh, also, um, pawn on e3 could be weak in, in some positions, right? So you will see how, how interesting the uh, move Black played uh, here, queen c7, right? Uh, um, of course, um, you may consider like bishop e7 or bishop d6, but queen c7 is very, very cool move. Because here, after knight of three, black takes, and now white cannot take with e pawn because the queen would take on f4. So, so that's that's you know the idea of that move. So white takes e d4, and now knight b4. So black is taking uh, the advantage now of the open c file. Bishop b1 controlling the space c2, bishop d7, a3, and now very important move here for black, rook c8. So yes, the knight is attacked, but also the bishop is attacked on c1. And that's why uh, white played castling, but now black plays bishop b5. Look at this one. So rook is attacked, right? So if you take on b4, then bishop takes on f1, and then again, the, the bishop on c1 is attacked. So white plays this move, and he knights it, right? So we have a fork, right? Black is attacking two rooks. So white needs to take, and uh, and here we can we can see uh, the strategy. Right, uh, the rook and the queen aligned on the c file, and very hard now for for white to play this position. At the same time, there is you see this pawn structure here, right? Creates the weak weak e4 uh, square. Right? So so black later will will actually land on that square. Rook goes to c2, and. Um, of course, uh, why are you trying to close close the C file by playing uh, knight C3, but black plays knight E4. Look at the strategy. Pay attention to to to, to this position. Look beautiful uh, control over the C file. Knight on E4, excellent bishop on B5. Another rook is going to come to C8, right? Because you have to you have to take a control over the C file. And now bishop replaces the knight. So white has a problem with, a, with this attack. Right? Knight d2 and uh, king d7. Now you may ask yourself why not castling, right? But see, this is already uh, an endgame, right? So, so you actually want your king to be closer to the center, not to go to g8, right? Uh, so king d7 is, is better because you are bringing also the rook to d8. Let, let's let's stop here. Let's pay a little bit attention to the white pieces. Look at the bishop. Cannot move. But because the bishop cannot move, 
the two rooks also are not active. If you remember in the beginning of the lesson, I told you that's one of the problems that white has. And um, there's no chance. In this moment, there's no chance for uh, white to save this game. This is strategically so much better for black. Rook c8. And then um, black plays the small book. Black is activating the rooks on uh, the C file. Strong activities. And uh, and of course, uh, I love this move. King C6. Uh, black, black, can, uh, black wants to go into the center by playing King B5 or King D5, right? See, in, in, in the end games, you need a king, right? So support of the king is very important. Here, rook in, and of course, we're going to get some trades, right? This move. And then king to b5. Look how black is playing on the white colors. Uh, white has all kind of problems. Uh, pin, uh, this pawn is attacked, and the king is coming into the game. King a4, right? Supporting the, the rook. And then this move a5. This is an important move, like we'll, we'll review later, but this is one of the most important moves. Pawn takes, he takes, and now uh, black has a bad pawn that can become a queen. So the game is, is really uh, finished. And let's move. And now, of course, the trade is happening. You trade everything, right? And that's a strategy of simplification, right? We need to learn to trade the pieces when we are so much better, right? In this case, uh, um, the black king is in, in a dominant position, right? Crossed into the white side of the board. You have a pawn, um, outside pawn, right? And you're simply going to go to d3 and capture, capture all those pawns. So white resigned the game here. So let's review the game. Let's see how to find the most important uh, moves, right? I like this position where black plays queen c7. So if you don't have any system against the stone wall, maybe you could remember this move, queen to c7, right? Because your your idea is to take on d4, knight f3, and uh, then just uh, remember this attack on the c5. Look how black played very nicely, rook c8, right? And then, of course, um, bishop b5 and knight c2. Okay. And I think uh, the, the, uh, the white is already in big trouble here, right? So you can trade everything. So this is really strategical position. Pay attention to the white pieces. They're having the problems with the development. There's a big problem for white because this knight can jump there, right? And uh, and like we already noticed, right? Uh, black even did not make a castling, but black plays king d7, right? Here replacement of the knight with a bishop, and then king king to d7, and the next rook is coming to c8. So strategically, this game is very be beautiful. You know, uh, we call this in chess positional chess, right, that you can learn from this game. And then, of course, uh, I also love this this idea of bringing the king into the game, right? That's that's something that I will remember, like, from this game. And, uh, and then king b5, and of course, uh, also this move a5, I would remember. So all this is a part of the strategy, and uh, and now, of course, uh, after you capture the pawn, um, white doesn't have a, a chance anymore. But remember also this kind of idea. When you are better, stronger, trade the pieces, right? You want to simplify the game, make it easy for yourself. Right? You trade everything, king goes into the white side of the board, and now you win easily. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this lesson uh, on the strategy, on the positional uh, chess. Have a good night. Bye-bye.